And so the videos on the Lost Stations of Cardiff are, as far as I'm aware, complete. I know there was a platform over at St Mellon's that was used for temporary time, which I think may have been tied up with some of the army camp over there. I'll investigate that some other time. Um, it's been great to hear comments, thank you, especially the ones on St Fagans where people are going, I remember using that to go to visit the museum. Um, and it's been also very interesting to find out more about some of the places I've visited. And there's one in particular I wanted to come back to. I'll be giving you no surprise that here I am, it looks like I'm in the park until I go in that direction and you'll see, yep, I'm back in the cemetery. I want to thank Michael Fox who sent me um, a load of information on Twitter about some of the local lines and alerted me to some books by a gentleman called Cook, which are effectively the track maps of all the railways up and down the Romney Valley and all around Cardiff. I've got this one already, which is the Cardiff one, uh, the Romney one, sorry, the Cardiff one's coming, one or two issues with eBay. Um, and it has actually backed up a lot of what I've been researching and saying. But the one thing I'm really annoyed at is the obvious thing that I missed when filming about the cemetery station. You see, it's that word, station, not halt, not platform, station. When I look through the back issues of newspapers from that time, they talk about the opening of the, the tunnel and saying there are two stations. Lanishan and Cemetery that have opened. Not Cemetery Platform or Cemetery Halt, Cemetery Station. And when I opened the uh, book, Michael sent me some stuff over and I looked in there, I missed it. There are two platforms, or there were two platforms at Cemetery Station. So where was the second one? In order to investigate, I'm gonna to need to leave the cemetery and uh, have a wander around and have a look at the layout of the streets within the vicinity. And in particular, a little anomaly that I found on a map. So let's take a wander. So all in these houses around here, all were in a nice long row with a gate at the end today, leading to a path which went around the back of the house. And they started at one end and they ended the other, very similar to this one over here. So there we go, you'd go in there, there'd be a path down the end, and right down that whole row of houses would be a path. And the only exception to that rule of all the houses that I can see on this map is on this street with this row of houses here. Because this row of houses has a gap. And at the end of it is the railway. So you'll see down there, this is why I filmed before, since I filmed earlier on in the year, these electric, uh, these, are, these are trunking for the electric cables for the electrification of the line. There's something else I missed. Is, What's this? Look at this thing here. I don't think that's a tree trunk. That could be something man-made. Again, would that have been something that sat on the station? So there we are on the map. It shows two platforms. Pretty sure that's where the second one was. And when they built the houses, because there was a platform there, they left space for people to get into it. And the ex entrance to the station, ramp or whatever, was, was there. And that's how people coming down towards cemetery station would have got off the train should it have stopped. The Board of Trade made a note on the report of the station when it opened in 1871 that it's very unlikely to be used and I think we have seen that and certainly by 1890 it had been taken off the signalling uh, signaling plans and it had been taken off the plans of the track but there we have it cemetery station not platform not halt. I'll be back for something longer soon, so until next time.